So, good morning. It is Wednesday, June the 29th. It's been a few days since we've seen each other, huh, folks? Um, I apologize for not posting a video in the last couple of weeks. I'm going to explain what's been going on in my life. Um, and I secondly, I apologize for not posting part two of the um, Notre Dame Minecraft world that I put together that I promised for better or worse to be posting the last time I posted a video. I'm going to wait until I learn that program a little bit better so that I don't make people absolutely seasick trying to watch those videos. Because, holy Hannah, that was a mess. Um, hooray for first times. Yay! <laughs> okay, so let me, let me start by explaining myself. Let me explain myself, officer. Um, <laughs> so I've just come off of a two-week summer camp for theater, and it was for kids aged 7 to 13, which ate a lot of my brain, an awful lot of my brain. Um, I've been sick. This is fun. See above statement about summer camp with kids for a reason why I'm sick. Um, and I've just been getting through the swing of end of school year, end of recitals, end of everything. Um, but now I am in a place where summertime is a lot, uh, a lot smoother, a lot easier. The only thing I have on my current horizon that's out of character is a wedding in a week and a half on the weekend. Um, so that'll be next weekend. Uh, and I have 4th of July festivities this Monday, but that's not a big deal, really. Um, so, um, here I, I want to talk about something today. I know every time I come on, I talk about something different, and there's no real rhyme nor reason to what I do, and I kind of like it that way. It gives me a chance to share who I am. Um, it gives me a chance to share different kinds of things with people so that I, I, I find something, hopefully I say something or do something interesting for everyone at some point. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to start with the charity for the day. And the charity is an organization called PCOSChallenge.org. And PCOSChallenge.org is, I'm reading it off the internet, which is why my eyes look like I'm reading a script. I'm not. I'm just looking at a website. PCOSChallenge.org is a nonprofit organization that, as they say, they are advancing the cause for girls and women with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Okay? What is polycystic ovarian syndrome? So, um, yesterday, to backtrack just a bit, yesterday was a couple of anniversaries. First of all, it was the four-year anniversary of my husband and I buying this beautiful house we live in. So that was really cool. Yay! But more importantly for me personally, yesterday was the five-year anniversary of my total hysterectomy. And when I say total hysterectomy, what I mean is when they did the hysterectomy, they did the hysterectomy, an oophorectomy, and an appendectomy. They removed from me my uterus, my cervix, my fallopian tubes, and my uh, ovaries. They also removed my appendix because it was horribly, horribly scarred. Along with all of this removal, they also removed a lot of endometriosis, which is like, um, it's, it's extra tissue that's all built up that shouldn't be there. Because of this endometriosis, I had adhesions, which means things are fused together by extra tissue. I had adhesions on my bowel, on my bladder, on my intestines that were causing things to fuse together, which explained why I was in such excruciating amounts of pain all the time. Um, I started having issues back in 1995 when I first got pregnant. Um, they found precancer in 1995, which for many women is not an uncommon thing. Many people have precancer removed at some stage in their life, um, especially women. They found precancer on my cervix, removed it. What I didn't know at the time was the doctor who did it butchered it so badly that I would never carry children again. And I proceeded to spend the next, um, I don't know, how long is that? 15 years trying to get pregnant, miscarrying, um, or not getting pregnant, and then getting progressively larger in size, my voice dropping, 
my creases, uh, like my underarms and my neck, um, all the other creases in the body between the fingers, the knuckles, things like that, um, getting darker. And um, many of my normal monthly functions becoming very horrific. Um, it was finally diagnosed around 2001, 2002, that I had something called polycystic ovary syndrome. And what that is, is the ovaries start to produce multiple cysts frequently, and they will pop and regrow and pop and regrow. And yes, it feels just as good as it sounds. But PCOS will really screw up the life of the woman who has it. Um, there are so many different levels that it affects you on. Um, physically, one of the first signs is weight gain. So during this time period, until I had my hysterectomy from the time I started having real issues in about 99, um, I gained around 15 to 25 pounds every year. And that doesn't sound like a whole lot until you start multiplying the years. And from 99 until 2000, 2010, 2011, um, that's 12 years at roughly 20 pounds a year. So do the math that weight doesn't come off. That weight doesn't come off without extreme starvation and extreme exercise and usually some kind of surgery. Um, I don't have the time to exercise seven hours a day. I don't have the money to eat nothing but carrots. Um, nor do I have the stamina for it. My God, how do, I don't even know. Um, and I refuse to have a gastric bypass surgery. Since my, since my hysterectomy five years ago, I've stopped gaining weight entirely. I have stabilized, which tells me that it's less about lifestyle and more about the syndrome. Um, however, to lose that weight is almost impossible still. Um, you know, I do what I can, but the reality of it is there, there's a good chance that I will pay for this for the rest of my life, however long that may be. Um, polycystic ovary syndrome, I don't think most people are aware of how it happens, doctors, doctors included. I have my own philosophies, I have my own theories, and my own conspiracy um, ideas about the government and chemicals and Vietnam War and such, um, but those could just be tinfoil hat theories. However, you know, what it's done is I used to sing. I can't really sing anymore. My voice has kind of been trashed. Um, I don't like the way I look. Um, I live with it. I deal with it. I function with it. I don't, uh, I don't choose to fly. I don't choose to go to amusement parks. There's a lot of things I choose to not do because of my size. Um, and it all comes down to the fact that doctors were too stubborn to listen to me. I had a hard time being diagnosed. Um, every time I had to change doctors due to insurance change, I had to be re-diagnosed. And let me tell you, they have a long, ugly list of procedures you have to go through. I'm sharing this with you because it is an anniversary and it's important to me. The women get themselves checked out if they feel like their bodies are not functioning properly. If your monthly cycles are not appropriate. Um, if your weight is gaining and there doesn't seem to be a reason why. If your hair is growing in unusual ways, for example, if you feel like you should sign up for a circus and be a sideshow freak, you may have PCOS. Um, I want women to understand something. I want everyone to understand something, actually. Um, we live in these bodies. We live in these bodies every single day. We wake up in these bodies. We function in these bodies. We go to bed in these bodies and we sleep in these bodies. If we don't know what's going on in our own bodies, we cannot expect doctors to understand it, okay? If you feel there's something wrong with you, you, you have a right to yourself and a responsibility to yourself to talk to your doctor. And if your doctor won't listen to you saying there's something wrong, find a new doctor until you find one that does listen. I had learned the very, very hard way how to be my own medical advocate. I had to do research. I had to do footwork. I had to do appeals writings. 
um, for denial after denial. I had to face a board of 13 retired and active general and gynecological doctors, health insurance uh, employees, and heads of heads of insurance company. Bull crap. Um, and I had to do it alone. I had Dan by my side, don't get me wrong, but I had to do it alone. I had to do all the legwork and the research and the writing and everything alone. Um, before I finally found a doctor who was willing to give me the hysterectomy that stopped PCOS in its tracks and leaves me where I am now rather than worse because most doctors wanted me to wait until I was in my 50s and had a natural menopause before they would even address any of my issue. Um, I, it's not an unfamiliar theme that the medical world is unkind to women, particularly insurance and particularly in the United States. But I'm here to tell you that they are not only unkind to women, they are uncaring. So if you are not your own advocate, you will not get the help you need. The help you need. So please, if you suspect that you have something like polycystic ovary, ovary sy syndrome, let's try that in English five times. Um, please push until you find a doctor that can actually test you and diagnose you for it. And additionally, there are many procedures that they recommend that you have, according to the health insurance, that um, are not necessary for you, nor are they safe for you. So make sure that if something is recommended, you research it. You talk with your doctor very clearly about what it is, why it's necessary, and whether or not you actually are an appropriate candidate for that procedure. Um, I could go on for hours with this story, but there's no point, really. I've, I've kind of said my piece on it. Um, so anyway, so the, um, the charity that we're looking at this week then is PCOSChallenge.org. Their mission, again, is to raise public awareness about PCOS and to help girls and women with the condition overcome their symptoms and reduce their risk for life-threatening related diseases such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. So... Uh, I will put their link down below. Um, what else was I going to say? Theater camp was great. Um, kids were great. It went well. Uh, and then hours. So, you know, I've been tracking my, my community service hours. Uh, the theater camp, I got paid $100 for um, roughly 50-some hours worth of work. So that reimbursed... Um, I got a check for my supplies that I was able to put a receipt to, but there were a lot of supplies that I used that didn't have a receipt. So between those supplies and gas, I figured the $100 covers that. So with that and the two community bands that I'm in, I am now actually over my yearly goal. My yearly goal was 100 hours. <coughs> Excuse me. It's that cold. So my yearly goal was 100 hours. I am now at 108, and I'm still going. We're only halfway through the year, so I still have the whole rest of the year to make up negative 92 hours. <laughs> so maybe my new yearly goal will be 250 hours of community service. Um, and I think that's all I really have to say today. Happy June. Um, you know, uh, happy 4th of July coming up in a few days for those of us in the United States. Um, once again, my usual my usual uh, um, public service announcement, I guess, when it comes to military holidays, is go hug a vet, um, go hug an active serviceman, go thank someone who's done the jobs that we can't do. Um, yeah, um, remember that these people had to do a job that um, allowed for us to have the freedoms to have religion, the freedoms to have the partners we choose, the freedoms to live um, within this country where we choose and to travel about it freely for the most part. Um, so hug a vet, hug a serviceman, shake someone's hand, say thank you. Uh, I hope you all have a beautiful weekend. It's gorgeous weather out there by us and uh, I am going to go get my day started at the shop for my first normal week in the shop in a long time. And I will probably be playing Minecraft all day. So, you know, that's me. <laughs> I hope you guys have a good one, and I'll catch you next week. Bye.